Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Ali and Stevie alongside me here in the studio. Julianne Laurent with us. Jules, what does a Saturday look like in the Laurent's household without any football? Well, there was football in my household because my two oldest were playing today, one in South London, one in North London, oh. so you had to juggle, then one had a birthday party. Today was chaos. Today is one of those days, you know, one had the hairdresser, it was mental. How are you on the sideline, Jules? <laughs> not good. Not really? good. Oh, you're not one of them. No. Come on, Jules. No, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. It's just that first we speak in French so no one else can understand. But they, they, there's a lot of tension. I can, I feel tense. I want them to, to do well, to you know, pass the ball at the right time, all of that. So I'm a bit tense. I'm, I'm not doing well watching them play. Oh man! Why are you putting the face, Stevie? <laughs> it reminded me. There's a, there was a famous singer. Okay, here Scotland, we go. Nice, nice, old relevant. Sydney Devine. Good. Yes. When was this? 1946. Well, well, good old Sid. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> only in Scotland. Listen, in Scotland, I mean, there's. And there's no such, pretty much there was never such a thing as country music in Scotland or England, was there? Come right. On. But he was. Okay. Anyway, right. the story is his son, I played with him at Air United. But, but when he was younger, his son used to play in a team we used to play against. And the whole game, all you heard was Gary's dad, Sydney, the singer, shouting, give it to Gary, give it to oh, Gary. Oh, nice. Three kicks, let Gary take it, corners. Let Gary take it. Gary, Gary, Gary. Brilliant. Like, Was he singing oh. it? Yes. Give it to Gary. Go, Gary, go. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was at home. <laughs> right, we've got lots of questions. Uh, was that a foul on Alison, Stevie? <laughs> uh, just kidding. Let's not reopen that case. Uh, Jules, what are your thoughts on Donnarumma's recent comments about his playing time at PSG? And who do you think should be PSG's number one goalkeeper? Mm. What the recent comment that I must have missed out because he's played the last three games, so he can't have complained recently about not playing enough when he's played. You know, the recently he's been the the number one really. I think from the beginning we knew and we said when he signed. Remember that this was going to be difficult for Pochettino to to make everybody happy because Navas has been great for PSG since joining from Real Madrid. He doesn't deserve to be dropped. Donnarumma is obviously much younger and a very good goalkeeper as well and he needs to play and he wants to play. So there was a lot of juggling to do for Pochettino. I don't think they did too badly so far no, in uh, terms Don, of, of Donnarumma came time. out, Jules. I imagine like you working with Gab, Donnarumma says that it disturbs him, this battle. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand. He's a young, he's a young keeper who's been first choice at Milan since he was 16. So this is all new to him. But again, I understand what he says. But don't tell me if you don't have that you didn't think when you signed that this could happen, because there, no one, no one would have told him when he signed. Oh, you're going to be the number one. He must have known that at some point, because of because Navas was there and because of what Navas represents at the club after two seasons there that it was not going to be straightforward. You in the team, you play every game, every cup game, every Champions League match all the time. So I understand what he's saying, but I find it a bit strange that he didn't see this one coming. Could you please play the guitar again? Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, yeah. not bad, eh? <laughs> Just natural. It was more like a ukulele that you were playing. It was, it was like, well, I'm only little. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm only, I'm I'm only got a small hand. I've never got... seen a guitar player have his hand this high. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Cornish guitar. <laughs> Big strings, boy. Yeah. How's your guitar playing going on? Oh, oh it's going Christmas. very well. Got one for Alice, Christmas like three or four years. He got one for Christmas four years ago? Right. Oh, did Correct. you? How many times have you played it? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm left-handed, so right. and he was strong for right-handed, so right. I need to get it you just re-strung. Just that way upside just, down. <laughs> oh, that's not how it works, Steve. So you haven't had it re-strung? <laughs> no, and I'm not. I, I, look, I'm not exactly interested. So why did you get it in the first place? I didn't get it. It was a Christmas present. Who got you that? My beautiful, lovely wife. Well, it doesn't sound like she knows you at all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Santa? <laughs> it was Santa, Dan. Santa. <laughs> it was not on your list. <laughs> Ali, if you're Chavi, what positions are you looking at as red flags that need replacements on the transfer market? <laughs> How many flags do you have? 
Uh, I have one flag. Have you got any one? One flag. What is that? What one position are you changing at Barca? Good lord. I have to address, and this would be a difficult flag. I have to address what I do with Sergio Busquets. Right. I have to. Put me in a Spain shirt, Bosch. Yes, and that works out very well. And and I, I imagine that you cannot remove him from the field, but you have to protect him. Right. Because he looks, he looks so incredibly slow when he's having to defend, and he's having to defend a lot because their possession is not nearly as good, which is the part of the of the field that he should be controlling. So because their possession is not nearly as good, he's having to chase, and he does not look good doing it. Jules, what's the most likely destination for Pogba if he ends up leaving on a free in the summer? It's a good question. I don't think right now there's a most likely. I think he will take his time certainly to, to see what offers are coming. And we know already that Mino Raiola has been calling a few clubs there and there. I think he will have offers. Uh, because because he would be a free agent, so Pogba, 29 years old, which he would be in March, as a free agent, I think you, if you're Juventus, if you're Real Madrid, if you're Barcelona, it, and have the money in terms of the wage bill, then I think you look at it. If you're PSG, I think you look at it, and if he's the profile that you're looking for, and if Mino is not too greedy in terms of commissions, if the wages are not too extortionate, let's put it that way, then I think you look at him. And same for United, I think United will still want to keep him. So he will have all those offers on the table and then pick where he thinks uh, the best one is. I personally believe that he will go to Juventus, who I think will make a move for him. But as we know, Real Madrid is his dream. I think there's a, there's a lovely thought in his mind about going back to Paris, where obviously he all started as a kid. So all of that, but I think he will be in quite a strong position come the summer. Do you know the only thing that's guaranteed? He's not, go he's not staying at United. Not a chance. So, we'll look forward to his new contract being announced soon at United. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not a chance. I'll give you 10 to 1 on any new one. Oh, here he's we not go. There. All right. 10 to 1, shall I take that bet, Jules? We're doing odds now. Well, if, if, if TV is so sure, 10 oh. to 1 is a, bit, is a bit low for my liking. Oh, yeah. He wants 100 to 1. I'll give him a million to one. Whoa! Oh, hey, 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 hey. I'll take it too. Hold on. I'll, I'll take it as well, please. There's a checkbook out right now. <laughs> What's he doing? The checkbook. <laughs> oh, God. Not a chance. <laughs> I'll you wrote a check. Okay. <laughs> what would you consider a successful season for Arsenal, Jules? Top six, top six would be, I mean, top four is exceptional season, pretty much. Uh, but top six, I think, is, is a successful, good season. Of course, if you could do well in the, in, in the FA Cup, good on you. But I think they'll have, they have to focus on the league. And if you get top six after finishing seven and eighth, the last two seasons, then already you're improving. And especially, I think it's quite a competitive season already. We can see that. So top six would be, would be successful, I think. I think this will be a brief answer from Stephen Nicholl. Mm -hmm. Will the signing of Dean Smith save Norwich's season? <laughs> what? Sorry? <laughs> Will the signing of Dean Smith? Yeah, Dean Smith is going to head to Norwich, yes. according to reports. Will it save Norwich's season? No, not a chance. OK. Not a chance. Jürgi Klopp. Oh. Jürgi Klopp. Do you call him Jürgi? No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you said Jürgi Honestly, Klopp. There's not, a, there's not a manager on the planet that can save Norwich. With the players you've got. What's the worst weather you've all played in? Last night's US men's national team match in the cold rain remind me of when they played during a snowstorm. That felt never ending. That was the Costa Rica game, isn't it? Our very own Hercules Gomez played in. Oh. Worst weather. Does it, does it count if you were a kid? Yes, of course it does. I once played for the Boys Brigade. Right. I think I was 11 or 12. Now, the Boys Brigade hut was down by the beach. Right. So the actual field was like 100 yards from where the beach started to the sea. OK. And we played this game and it was absolutely, it was raining, it was sleet, there was a howling gale. God, I just, I, I couldn't play. I started the game and at right. half time I said, I can't play. Wow. I had to get out. I was, I was crying with the cold. <laughs> Never forget it. What's worse, cold or hot? Oh, cold. 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 Yeah. cold. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
we were playing a preseason match with the Houston Dynamo against FC Dallas in Dallas, and for whatever reason, it was uh, a storm, ridiculous storm in Dallas. Cold, raining sideways, and it's a sort of rain that now, because it was so cold now, it was sleeting sort of thing. And the wind was coming towards the goal that we were attacking. I usually play with my back to goal, so I was facing the rain coming this way, or the sleet coming this way. And it got to the point to where I knew I couldn't feel my face. And I also, but the only thing that I could, that I could tell was that essentially whatever was coming out of my nose was getting frozen as well. Mm. And all I was doing was removing frozen snot of my face. That's how I spent that first half. I actually scored in that first half. It was awful. You, you didn't like that visual? No, yeah, I didn't no. like it either. <laughs> Actually, my first, my first away game, I came on as a sub for Air at our broth. Right. Have you heard of our broth smokies? <laughs> We're okay. So it's, it's, a, it's, a fishing, it's a fishing place. It's got a country music singer associated. Yeah. Surprisingly <laughs> enough, the pitch was right next to the sea. Oh, beautiful. And I was on the bench. Oh. And I came on for the last 10 minutes, maybe. I, I, I couldn't feel my feet. Mm. I couldn't. Wow. I, Wow. I don't know how I'll actually run up and do it. I could not feel my feet. I'll go back to Dallas as well. Summer. And, uh, and it, it, this was the day in which it, there was the uh, game of the week for ESPN. Right. And the kickoff was at 4 o'clock Eastern. And wow. Dallas would have been 3 o'clock uh, in the summertime. And we were playing at Dragon Stadium because the Cotton Bowl was closed or uh, being remodeled or something. This Dragon Stadium had black turf. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that the would shoes, just absorb all the shoes. Wash. I mean, it was hot as hot could be. The shoes were melting underneath your feet. Wow. And so by the time we got back to the locker room at halftime, people are changing their shoes because it's going through the sole of the shoe onto their feet. Wow. It's like the shoes were falling apart underneath you. That was awful. Who is the nicest person you ever played with? Like someone you could call at midnight for help and they'll come without hesitation. Um, I'd like to think there's a few. What name, maybe, that we know would spring to mind? Most of the boys at, at Liverpool would, during the, the good times, yeah. would, if you called them in the middle of the night, would come and help you. Right. I mean, it would be easier to tell you who wouldn't, to cool. be honest. I think I could call you two at midnight and you would yeah. help me. I think, I think yeah. that would be all right. I'd call Eleanor as opposed to you because at midnight... <laughs> I will. <laughs> he may not be functional. <laughs> I might not be her neither. Jules, what's your favourite TV series or film ever? Wow. It's got to be a lower low. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's be that's a very brilliant. 80s <laughs> way. Hello, hello. We just didn't know until Stevie <laughs> obviously referenced it when I started working with you guys a few years ago. Um, oh, the pink, that's, he loves a pink panther. I, I think... <laughs> pink panther. In my top three, The Sopranos, of course, and Game of Thrones. And then for the third one, I'll probably go Breaking Bad, although Succession right now, if you're watching on HBO, which is the third season, is amazing. But I go Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, and Sopranos, you can't really go wrong. Ooh, some investment. Some investment in those. What about you? I don't know. See, I like the, like the UK office. Yeah. Really enjoyed Alan Partridge, that sort of comedy. Yeah. Very good. That's for kind of right Better there. than the American office. Different. Okay. Different. I'd go to the UK, but not necessarily the American office is bad. Okay. You're just buying time, aren't you asking me? No, no, I'm just... I was Where are you going, Ali? <laughs> In terms of my favourite TV series? Or movie? Oh, boy. <laughs> I was buying time. Steve, you're going only Fools and Horses, oh, I see. Yes, which absolutely. is a UK sitcom which ran in the 80s, 90s. Just oh, extremely popular. Oh, my. But you can still... The thing about... The reason it's so good is you still watch it 30 years later. Yes. And it's, you're still laughing as hard. There you go. Fantastic. There you go. Even Craig laugh. It makes Craig laugh. Oh, well. Wow. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's it. Shut it down. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> Final question. Steve, you have to give up one for a year. Which would it be? Ground beef, cheese, potatoes, or beer? <laughs> we just want to give up one. Uh, oh, no. You, yeah, so, no, in fact, you've got to keep one. Keep one. Let's do it that way. Oh, keep one. Yeah. So, I've got to give the rest up. Yes. 
Well, that's easy, isn't it? <laughs> that's not even, that's not uh, even a question, is it? Cheese? <laughs> uh, maybe not cheese, maybe not potatoes, <laughs> and... Maybe, maybe not ground beef. Maybe not ground beef. Yep. <laughs> Hence, I'm not calling you at midnight. Thank you very much, everyone. That is it. ESPN FC will be back on your screens tomorrow, reflecting on those big games. Of course, Spain in action against Sweden, plus it's Portugal against Serbia. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.